One much to Raw. Uh, yesterday in Observer Radio, Dave noted that uh, Vince McMahon was uh, back from his uh, his back surgery leave and that he changed a lot of things on the show. But uh, the update today is he's actually been doing that for several weeks now. So this was not the first time that he had called things. And he was not there, but he has been calling in ideas and such now for several weeks. And uh, there were a lot of changes last night. And it wasn't like a, a show that was, you know, stupid like it used to be, but it was just kind of there. So the story, the main story of the show is that uh, Cody and Sammy trust Jay Uso. A lot of other baby faces do not, including Kevin Owens. And the Judgment Day is trying to recruit him into their group. So Jay comes out and then Kevin comes out and does this big speech about how, listen, I know that, uh, you know, Cody and... And uh, Sammy, you know, they endorsed you, but I don't trust you. A lot of people here don't trust you. So the Judgment Day comes out, and they said, well, we trust you. You know, you should join. We're, we're a great group of people here. And uh, Priest said, and Kevin, you know, where, where's Sammy? Like, he was supposed to be here tonight for a match. And Kevin said, well, he's not here, but I'll fight all three of you if I have to. And then Jay stepped in and said, Kevin, I, I'll do it. And so they agreed Kevin Owens and Jey Uso versus the Judgment Day, which was Finn and Priest. And they had a good match. And the story at the end is Kevin gets the hot tag. He's running wild. And then breaks down into a four-way. And, of course, Jey Uso throws the big super kick, and he accidentally super kicks Kevin. Kevin eats the coup de gras. He gets pinned. He's furious. He shakes his head at Jey. He heads to the back. And after commercial, Jay's trying to apologize, and Kevin's screaming at him. He says, I don't want to hear it. Why don't you go in the Judgment Day locker room, find your new bloodline, get out of here. And he storms off. <laughs> Why don't you dye your hair purple? Which actually he did. He had, he had, he had blue there in the back. Couldn't help but notice. Then we have uh, Miz and Akira Tozawa. Absolutely, preposterously laughable. Uh, Miz has to play, like, tough guy. Tough guy bully. Bullying Akira Tozawa. Mean face, you know? It was it was like... I, no, I've seen you try. Y- you gotta watch it for the absolute <laughs> hilarity of this one. But of course, Miz won. They're setting up the match with Miz and LA Knight. Hanging him, hanging over the rope, screaming at the hard cam like he's a badass. It was... Yeah, that was something. Man, Lenny won't give up here. Lenny, Vince isn't running it. He's calling in ideas. <laughs> I mean, every week, dude... Like, is this going to be, you know, five years from now, you're trying to change history? Then we have Byron with Raquel. Now, this was a Vince segment. I mean, this was total WWE speak. I mean, actually, anybody in TKO could have written this from what we learned today. It was just like one nickname after another, one smile after another. It sucked. You should you should actually AI that one. Then Shayna Baszler did a promo, and she said, you know, Joey, uh, Zoe surprised me last week. <laughs> Zoe Soprano? So Chelsea walks up, and she says, Sweet you know, my partner's name. still not medically cleared, so how about you be my partner? And Shayna says, I don't want to be your partner, and I'll beat your ass. So they agreed to a match, and then uh turns out Piper is back. She's uh, She was sick last week. Now she's back and ready to go, so she took her belt back. Then we had a great segment. Gunther comes out for his celebration. And he's doing this speech about how great he is and all these former champions are terrible and he's running out of competition. And he is interrupted by Chad Gable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Vince is running it, but now Chad Gable's the guy who's going to beat Gunther. Yeah. He's not Shorty G anymore. He's Chad Gable. This was absolutely not a Vince McMahon segment. This was the exact opposite, in fact. So Chad Gable comes out and he says, Last week... You know, I gave you a run for your money. I'm the closest anyone's ever come to beating you, Gunther. And you know what? I saw in your face that you knew no one's ever come close to beating you. But I also saw the look in my family's face. My daughter, tears pouring down her face. Tears that you caused. But you know what, Gunther? You wouldn't understand. You've got to be a father or a mother to understand that. But you have lit a, you have lit a fire under me. And I beat you once and I will beat you again. And Chad Gable who used to be Shorty G, but now he's a legitimate professional wrestler and a killer at that, he says, I swear to God I'm winning that championship, and I swear to God my daughter is walking out with a smile on her face. 
Now, if in fact you have been watching WWE of late since Triple H took over, mark my words, Lenny, you want to make a bet? Chad Gable's beating Gunther for the title. I'll make that bet with you. Now, you don't think he's going to win? No, and I'll tell you why. All right, I think it's tell a me why. Hand. I think it's a sleight of hand. You can get out of it by having, and I'm, I'm not trying to say get out of it, but I saw as that was happening with Chad Gable getting the victory with the ankle lock on Giovanni Vinci, who had Gunther locked in the stretch? Tommaso Ciampa. Again, if you're going with the Vince thing, you know Vince is probably not the biggest fan of Tommaso Ciampa, but Triple H is. Tommaso Ciampa and Gunther, I, I think, would be... Oh, man. Lenny's run me off the chat. I got to shut it down. <laughs> okay. No more be... chat today. I'm done. <laughs> to me, that would be the direction that you go. You have them injure chat so he can't be called a liar and, and fail in front of his kids and his God because he swore he was going to win that title. I think you'd do something to take him out of it, and then that slides in Gunther. All, again, I would really, and I don't know where they're going with Vinci in, in this group. I know they tried Vinci on his own in NXT, and then they cut it off when they brought everybody up to the main roster but boy would i love to see tag teams here i really would well i'm telling you chad's beating this guy for the belt now these broken honkies record now okay does that mean otis gets the girl and then turns on chad because he's already that... got the girl but does he turn on chad now nah that's too early okay too early then we had a brawl breaking out and this led to a uh the run-in by Champa setting up a six man for later Drew and Woods had a meeting earlier in the day. This was actually a great meeting. So Woods says, you know, Drew, what were you talking trash to Kofi for last week? And Drew said, well, if Kofi has a problem with me talking trash, he should man up and talk to me himself. And he starts to walk away, and Woods grabs him. He says, don't you turn your back on me. He says, I think the problem is that you're jealous of Kofi. He won the WWE title, he says, at WrestleMania in front of 82. 2,000 screaming fans. <laughs> and you had the biggest moment of your career in an empty performance center, and it keeps you up at night. Damn. And Drew says, listen, I know you want to fight, but I don't want to hurt you. And Woods is like, oh, yeah? And so Drew says, well, if you're so anxious to get beat up, you got it tonight. And this time it's not going to be an accident. We had Drew McIntyre and Xavier. They had a very good match. Xavier Woods, you know, he's a good he's a good singles worker, but they never use him in that role, well, except to be a jobber. And, uh, you know, Drew looked good and lots of near falls. Xavier's like, he's hitting the ropes. Boom, duck, boom, duck, bam! He got hit with the Claymore. This was the most beautiful Claymore you ever seen. Killed him. Pinned him. And that was the end of Xavier Woods. Cody came out for a promo. Wants to talk about Jey Uso, but out comes Dominic and JD, and Dominic's talking about how happy he is. Thank God you brought Jey Uso to Raw, he says to Cody. He's going to join the Judgment Day. So they get in an argument. Cody punches him. JD McDonough jumps Cody. They're double teaming him. Cody makes his own comeback, hits Dom with the cutter, goes to, uh, or JD hits the ring. Cody hits him with the crossroads. Dom gets up. Cody hits him with the crossroads as well. He beats up both men by himself. So I think next week it's probably going to be Cody and uh, JD, be my guess. Then McIntyre runs into Jay backstage. Drew says, uh, I just want to look you in the eye and tell you I don't trust you one bit. And Jay goes, that's cool. And Drew says, no, that's not cool. I don't think you can stand on your own two feet. Judgment Day probably sounds pretty good to you right now, doesn't it? And Jay says, if you don't like me, why don't you step up next week? And Drew says, you're on. Chelsea and Shayna Baszler... Shayna squashed her. Piper hits the ring, goes after Shayna. Zoe makes the save. And so uh, I think that probably we're going to see Shayna and Zoe winning those tag titles like at any moment now. Please. Yeah. This gimmick, this this Chelsea gimmick sucks. <laughs> so bad, so bad I'll make you sick. Make you cough, make you choke on it. That's how bad this I was giving of you the is. office and you just sat there. No, I, I, I took it. Then we had uh, another Nakamura promo. These Nakamura promos in Japanese are the greatest. He says, Seth can't be proud to be champion. I stood tall over his broken body. And this Seth, he's a liar. He's a manipulator. He's spent his career stabbing people in the back. He has no honor. I will strip him of that title. When I feel like it. I was like, ah, it's going so great. Now it sucks. 
So Seth comes out. He's dancing like an idiot. He's got a stupid outfit on. He's got his dumb glasses. He literally cuts a promo saying, you know, I used to try to please the fans, but it didn't work. So now I found out what I could do to get the fans to like me. I'm just being me. And he's got these sunglasses and this. It's just, it's so, I, I just, it's go away heat for me. And by the way, you know, I, I know friends of Seth and they're like, what is this stupid gimmick? This is not him. But in storyline, it's actually him. You know, he sits at home with those glasses on and he goes to the grocery store in that, that stupid fur coat that's green. And anyway, he calls out Shinsuke. They cut to Shinsuke backstage. He's killing Ricochet. And he goes, I thought you weren't medically cleared, so I killed someone else tonight. I will take your title, but not tonight. And Seth, who's the champion, is so sad that the challenger won't accept his challenge for a championship match. I'm like, okay, can we get this over with? Because this is stupid. I cannot wait till Nakamura starts insulting the Bears in Japanese. We have Alpha Academy versus Champa and Champa versus Imperium. And uh, good match. And the last few minutes were great. With uh, it's finally Gable and and uh, Gunther in there together. They're awesome. And then everybody ends up uh, outside except for Vinci and Gable. Gable puts him in the ankle lock. Gunther tries to slide in to make the save. But Champa puts him in his, uh, his whatever his finish is called. And uh, Gunther has to sit there and watch as this idiot Vinci taps out. They lose the match, and he's furious. We had Tiffany and Becky backstage for a contract signing, and they actually both were great. I thought Tiffany did a great job. Becky did a great job. They signed, and away they go. And then the main event was uh, Rhea beating Raquel. Match went too long. Fans didn't care. They didn't think Raquel had a chance. And then, as we'll get to after the break, the return of my whole Nia Jax. Back in a moment. So Raquel is outside, and uh, she gives Rhea her finish on the apron, and Rhea ends up inside. The ref's checking on her. And out comes old Naya. And she lays out Raquel, throws her in the ring. Rhea hits the riptide, pins her. And then Naya attacks Rhea after the match, and she, she pulls her into the corner. And uh, first, she just steps right on her belly. Like, not on her chest, but, like, right on her belly button, which totally looked like it sucked. And then she steps over her, and she gets on the uh, middle rope. So you do that Yokozuna splash, where you, like, uh, you know, you jump and you sit down on the person, and you kind of hold on to the ropes to make There's sure. There's an optical illusion with that. Not usually. this one. Not this one. Dude, she jumped off that rope, and she sat with all her weight right on Rhea's stomach. And her feet are out in front of her. Like, her center of gravity landed right on Rhea's stomach. I thought she killed her. And uh, then she slaps her in the face. A couple times. I was like, man, Rhea's back, brother. Or, mm. or uh, Nia. Nia is. Terrible. I don't know. Now Kyrie's going to be coming back? Uh, I don't know if she's going to be all oh, for this God. Man. God. There's a lot of people wonder. Oh, people don't. There's got to be some ulterior motive for not liking Nia Jax. No, she sucks as a professional wrestler. She's not entertaining to me at all. Maybe I'll be wrong. Uh, I'll be. Hey, it's not my company. They're gonna put her. If on she TV. doesn't hurt anybody, that'll be an improvement. Yeah, I just. I don't know. Uh, it's frustrating because I was bullish on her in NXT, and hopefully, I was hoping she would get better. It never ended up happening. Then you had the line of injuries and all that stuff, and it's just. <clears throat> Not a fan. And then Anthony Bowens starts talking about Mr. Ass. <laughs> He's in tears talking about Mr. Ass. One more time, he says, from your couch at home, scissor me, daddy ass. I wish they would have said something like, we called him on the ass phone. Remember how Gorilla Monsoon had the banana phone? Yeah. I just imagine a phone, an ass phone that they use to call Billy I'm going to regret this Google search headline <laughs> for an article on Vice from April of 2016. <clears throat> the secret world of tiny phones that go inside your butt. Oh, really? Well, that's, that's not quite what I was expecting. Nor, wait a second, there's an article on this? Can you can you send me this article? Okay, all right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. 
Now, if you Hello? told me, Hello? Craig, please. <laughs> what are we talking about? I don't know. Wrestling or something. Okay. Collision. Collision. House of Black versus Darius Martin in action <laughs> and Dreddy Lee Johnson. That's where you keep the phone. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, guys. Did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.